Hello. In this video, we will be going over New York State Math Regents tips with the TI Inspire CX2 family. We will be looking at the January 2023 New York State Algebra 1 Regents exam. I am demonstrating with the TI Inspire CX2 CAS, which is acceptable to use for the New York State Math Regents exams when you put it into the proper test mode. As I can't put this emulator into test mode, what I will do is put it into the settings that mirror the test mode. So I'll select number five from the home screen for settings. I'll choose number two, document settings. And I will change the cast mode from on to what is now acceptable, exact arithmetic. I'll tab on down and select OK, and now my emulator will mirror that of the New York State Math Regents exams. If you want to put the student's handhelds into exam mode, in the software, look for the Prepare Handhelds icon. Click on it and scroll down to the Send Press to Test and select choose test mode restrictions. For New York State, we must change the cast mode to exact arithmetic, and the only restriction we must select is the limit geometry functions. As we're doing an Algebra 1 Regents exam, this will not come into play. Send press to test will push this test mode setting to all connected calculators in the docking station, or with Navigator, send it wirelessly to all handhelds. So let's look at number one from the exam. When the expression 2x times the quantity x minus 4 minus 3 times the quantity x plus 5 is written in simplest form, the result is, and we have four multiple choice answers. On my Inspire, I'll select number one for new document, and if there is an option to save uh, the unsaved document, I'll say no, and I'll choose to use it as a calculator. In problems like this, I like to put a placeholder in for the variable, an arbitrary non-integer value to store into the variable so that I can check my work. My go-to has always been 12.3. The store feature on the Inspire is written in blue above the VAR button. So if I press Control followed by the VAR button, I get my store arrow. The problem is using X, so I'll use X. I'll press Enter, and now it just says that 12.3 has been stored into the variable X. I can type the expression 2x times, open parentheses, x minus 4, close parentheses, minus 3 times, open parentheses, x plus 5, close parentheses. I will press the standalone equals button, and now I can set the problem equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4, and only 1 will give me a true output. Now, I noticed that the negative 3 distributed to that 5 will give me a minus 15 or a negative 15. I really like the looks of answer 1. So I'll type in 2x squared minus 11x minus 15. When I press enter, I get the output of true. Now, it would be good to practice setting it equal to 2, 3, and 4 just to make sure this is the only true output. I can press the up arrow twice. That allows me to scroll into my history. When I press enter, it's a copy and paste. And if I wanted to check answer 2, 
The only real difference between answer 1 and answer 2 is that instead of minus 15, it's a plus 5 at the end. So I'll just edit and make it a plus 5, and when I press enter, I get false. You could repeat this process for answers 3 and 4, but you'll see the same outcome. Question 2. The point 3w is on the graph of y equals 2x plus 7. What is the value of w? We need to substitute in 3 for x. So we can type in 2 times 3, close parentheses, plus 7. When we press enter, we get an output of 13. That is answer 4. In question 4, given f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 10, what is the value of f of negative 2? I want to show a feature of the Inspire that might be helpful for instruction. This won't be the easiest way to do the problem, but it will educate you on the power of the Inspire technology. I'll go to Menu, and I'll choose number 1, Actions. There is a command called Define. I will select define, and I will define f1 of x to equal negative 3x squared plus 10. When I press enter, it just says done. But now, when I press the var button for variables, f1 is defined. When I select f1, it's asking me for what value of x do we want to evaluate this function. I'll put in negative 2, I'll press enter, and I get an output of negative 2. Why do it this way? Well, when I add a graphs page, and I scroll up because it defaults to F2, that's the next open edit line, I have my function that I defined on 1.1 on the calculator app already here in the graph application. So I could study the function further now that I'm on a graphs page. Let's now look at question number seven. What is the solution to 2 plus 3 times the quantity, 2a plus 1 equals 3 times the quantity, a plus 2. I'd like to do this in a calculator application. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my calculator application, control, left arrow, and a problem like this really speaks to the nSolve feature on the Inspire. The nSolve is found in Menu, choose number 3, Algebra, and find in your menu, Numerical Solve. I will then type in my equation to be solved. 2 plus 3, open parentheses, 2a plus 1, close parentheses, equals 3 times the quantity a plus 2. I need to close my parentheses, and before I close the outer parentheses, put a comma and tell the nSolve command, the feature, what variable am I solving for? Well, that is letter A. I'll close parentheses, and when I press enter, I get 0.3 repeating. If I wanted to see 0.3 repeating as a fraction, I could go to Menu. I see a fraction to decimal as option 2, so that piques my interest. Approximate to fraction. When I press enter, I get my one-third answer 2. Let's now focus on question 9. Which expression is equivalent to the quantity x plus 4 squared 
times the quantity x plus 4 to the third? Well, this is really a question based on testing students' knowledge of exponents. If you have like bases, you should add the exponents. So, let's just verify that we have 12.3 stored in for x. I just put x and hit enter. Now, what we can do is we can open parentheses, do an x plus 4, close parentheses, raise this to the second power, right arrow to get out of the exponent. I like to put the implied multiplication. You probably don't have to, but it's always good practice. Open parentheses, x plus 4, close parentheses, and raise this to the third power. I'll get out of the exponent. I'll set it equal to the quantity x plus 4, and if I have like bases, I should add the exponents. So 2 plus 3 is 5. That happens to be answer 2. When I press enter, I get a true output. Much like question 1, test it with other answers just to confirm only one gives you a true output. Focusing our attention now to number 12. If f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 and g of x equals 7x minus 5, for which values of x is f of x equal to g of x? So I'm going to go home because there's no place like home. I'm going to select number 1, new document, and I'm not going to save what I have so far. I'm going to open up number 2, add graphs. And in f of x, I'll enter the first function, x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'll hit tab to open up my entry line. And in f2 of x, I'll put in the second function, which is 7x minus 5. Okay, now the points of intersection aren't really showing up on the screen right now. So what we might want to do is adjust our window. What I enjoy, and most students tend to gravitate to, is going to a tick mark on either the X or Y axes. And notice that my cursor changes from the arrow to a grab hand that's open, and it says axes. You can press the control button once, and then the center of the touchpad once, which is the mouse click, if you will. And that will allow you to grab, and as you go towards the origin, do a zoom out. Away from the origin is a zoom in. Towards the origin is a zoom out. Now that I have the intersections taking place on the screen, I could go to Menu, select number 8, Geometry, and then number 1, Points and Lines. There is an intersection points feature, which when you select, turns on the tool. Hovering the icon in the upper left will give you the directions. Click on the first graph, and then click on the second graph. So if I move my mouse and click on the first function, and then the second function, I now see 2, 9, and 3, 16 listed. So the solution would be 2 and 3, answer 4. Let's focus our attention now to question 14. Which expression is equivalent to 2x squared plus 8x minus 10? I would like to open up a calculator application for this problem. Control doc is how I add a page. I see the calculator application is number 1. And when we deal with expressions being equivalent, this goes back to storing a value into the variable. My go-to is 12.3, a non-integer value, stored into the variable x. Once that's in place, I can type the expression that's given to us. 2x squared plus 8x 
minus 10. The standalone equals button will allow you to set that expression equal to any of the four multiple choice answers. Answer 1, 2 times the quantity x minus 1, close parentheses, open parentheses, x plus 5. When I press enter, I get at my output of true. Now you could try this with answers 2, 3, and 4, but I think you're going to find that they'll all say false. Let's wrap this video up by looking at question 16. 32 teams are participating in a basketball tournament. Only the winning team in each round advances to the next round, as shown in the table below. So we have rounds 0 through 5, and the teams remaining 32, which then gets down to 1. Which function type best models the relationship between the number of rounds completed and the number of teams remaining? And we either have an absolute value, exponential, linear, or quadratic representation. So I'll go home and I'll select the list and spreadsheet application. For the A column, I'll call this rounds. For the B column, I'll call this teams. For rounds, I put in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For the teams, I'll put in 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Make sure that you're no longer in cell B6 so that it is finalized. I just need a quick sketch of this. So I'll go to Menu, select number 3, Data, and there is a Quick Graph feature. If I just want to visualize the data, I'll select Quick Graph. Okay, I'm going to make the rounds my independent variable, and I'll make the teams my dependent variable. And that right there looks like an exponential decay. Answer 2. If you like this video, check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. And as my kids always say, like and subscribe. Have a great day.